Samsung promised to update the Galaxy Tab S6 with Android 10 One UI 2.1. The update is here and it's a massive 2100 MB update. And as you can see, the list of changes is pretty big. So I'll quickly talk about just the important ones and leave out the ones that are not that great. Anyway, I've updated it now and the first thing you should do after updating is go to Galaxy Store, click on Menu and then Updates. There are some apps that you will have to update manually. So just have a look at the list and click on update all. And guys, before we continue, I'm trying to reach 200,000 subscribers. It'll be great if you could drop a like, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. It'll really help me grow. And now let's get on with the first one. The internal file manager on Samsung called My Files now gives you the option to connect to a network storage, whether it's your FTP server or a network drive. Now it's also introduced something called as trash, so in case you accidentally delete a file, you can restore that. And the best thing is that now the filters are a lot more powerful. If you tap on image type, it'll give you the extensions that you may be looking for. Or let's say, you know, a specific document, whether it's an Excel, a PowerPoint, a PDF, you can do all that filtration. The Tab S6 now has Quick Share that allows you to share very large files with other Samsung phones that have Quick Share. So for example, on my Galaxy S20 here, I have a file here that's 500 MB. And if I want to transfer, I just long press, tap on share, and then I select quick share as the option. Of course, quick share has to be turned on on both the devices. Then you select tab S6, and the 500 MB file is transferred in less than 10 seconds. Phenomenal. With the Android 10 update, you now get digital well-being and parental controls built into the OS itself. So if you scroll down, now you see focus mode that allows you to disconnect from distractions and just focus on work. So, or whatever it is that you're doing, even if you're working out, you can select apps that you want to enable and want to use during that time and you'll only get notifications from those apps. You also now have parental controls which is great because tablets are often used by parents to share with their kids for entertainment purposes and this is great for that. The keyboard too has received a couple of under the hood updates and features. Let's begin with search. Now when you click on search it allows you to do just more than a basic search. So accept the terms and then let's say you search for Paris. You'll see multiple kind of results. You know, you'll see emojis that correspond to Paris, any contacts or even Netflix uh, movies or shows. For example, happy. So you'll get all these inputs and you can also filter them. As you can see, the filters are right here. So just tap on Netflix and you'll see things that correspond to happy on Netflix. You've got an inbuilt multilingual translator. You can, you know, define the from and to language and just translate on the go. There's Samsung Pass and then there is keyboard resize, which I think is really important on a tablet. So you can resize the keyboard to, you know, basically be smaller. And this allows you to type with more convenience because now the keyboard is focused in one area and it's just a lot easier. The next one has to do with navigation gestures. Uh, so if you go into display settings into navigation bar, you now have Android 10 gestures. So, you know, you can swipe from the left and the right edges also. This one is swiping from bottom, which again doesn't make sense for a tablet because you wouldn't use it like a phone. You'll always be holding with two hands. And given that, I don't think even this one, which is the Android 10 gesture, matters a lot. I would actually just keep navigation buttons because it's easier. Uh, you'll always be using your tablet with two hands and navigation buttons is just a lot easier, faster, and you'll make lesser mistakes while using your tablet. Okay, next one. Not sure if you've been using Reminder app, that's a Samsung app built into your device, but now you have shared reminders. So if in case you are one of those people who uses Samsung Social, you can now set shared reminders. You can also now add location-based reminders, which was not there earlier, but obviously your location setting has to be kept turned on for this to work. You also get music share now that allows you to connect two devices to the same speaker and control music. So let's say one is a smartphone, the other is your Tab S6. You can use both the devices to play music on the same speaker. It's just a convenience feature, though not sure how often you'll use it with your Tab S6. And now let's talk about some features that have come to Samsung DeX. First, they've introduced touchpad gestures. So you can use touchpad gestures now to uh, you know, perform certain actions. So if you tap with three fingers, you can assign to one of these actions and you can have another action defined for four finger tap. 
but this only works if you have an external HDMI display attached. Additionally, let's say you've got you know multiple windows open on Samsung DeX, you can now hold the window and drag it to the edge and it snaps uh, into a proper window. So that's new. Whether you want it or not, the camera interface has received an update. So the layout overall is in general better. You've got more camera viewing. You've got your modes at the bottom now interferes lesser while taking a picture. Of course, all the modes have been moved inside more. And obviously you can edit these functionalities and their position. So if you long press on one of the modes, you can then just drag it down to that area and drop it. And you can obviously uh, you know, change their priority. And lastly, Messages has received an upgrade. Uh, you can now create categories. So, you know, let's say you want to create a category called e-commerce or, you know, all your e-com orders that you place, you want all the updates to go into one category. So you can create it and then you can select messages that you want to move into that category and then just hit done. So now you have two categories. One is all, that's the default. But if you want to see specifically e-commerce based messages, you can do that. And you can go on and create as many categories as you want and you can manage them, edit them, delete them later. So that's something that has been introduced with messages if that is you use your tablet for phone calls and messages. And that's pretty much it. I've only talked about features that you can do something about. There are other under the hood changes that have happened with the One UI 2.1 upgrade, which I've not mentioned. They may not be as important. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.